on the boat. We got Victor behind the camera. We got our friend Krista with us today. And we've had an epic day of fishing. We've caught tuna, we've caught bonita, and we finally caught a wahoo on our own boat. We've been trying to do that for a really long time. Finally made it happen, super stoked. And we've got another fish on here. Not exactly sure what it is yet. Probably gonna be a bonita or a tuna. It's tugging. You're skipping him on top. Oh, Tuna! <laughs> wow, that was Talk a good move. <laughs> Talk about a flip. <laughs> Look, like, it came out. There you go. It's your lucky lure today. I don't know how he was hooked, but he was spinning. Right in the throat. You can see it. on the surface. Yeah. That's why it felt big. Little black fin. This is the third black fin of the day. Probably the smallest one, but we'll still eat him. He was hooked right there in the throat and that's why he was fighting so hard because it's you're not able to pull his head through the water pro uh, properly. Look how small he is and the thing that he ate. You ate the wrong bait today. Yeah. So, uh, we're out here and Bricky's got the first fish on. I think it's probably a little little blackfin or a little bonita. Maybe a little blackfin. It's out far. <laughs> this was on a feather. Bonita. Bonita? Bonita. In the cooler. Hey, Alright, Brooks turn. Alright, second fish on the feather of the day. This got hit, and that planer also just got hit. We'll you, see what are we you, got. Are you on, Christo? I think so, yeah. Still a little bit of weight. Doubled up. We've doubled uh, up on bonitas before, so it might be another pair of bonitas. We're tight. Find a blackfin. Yeah? yeah? Hey, we got a blackfin. What, did you need a gaff? Nah, it came off. Crystal! It came off. Well then maybe mine will probably be a black pin too. Yours, yours looked like a, like a five pounder, didn't it? Yes. We were digging deep, I went to go flip it and it came off. Well, Crystal lost his, he went to flip it and it came off, but we still got hope for Brooke. Brooke might have a black pin on. Yours is still so far. This is the second time I've had to reel in this far bait. Next time I'm giving it to Krista. <laughs> Blackfin. No? Yeah. I just love these fish. Every time you catch them, they just look so cool. Oh, we got a little black fin in the boat. First tuna of the day in the boat. Lost another one a little bit bigger. On the little feather. That's probably my favorite thing to troll out here is the feather. There he is, guys. Woo! Target species. Hell yeah! Shout out to Bait Trips.
guys, welcome back to the fillet table. So I'm about to fillet up this black fin tuna. We've already filleted two of them, got the meat in this bag. And then Victor has started to fillet his wahoo. We just have to finish skinning it. The meat on that is absolutely amazing. Very excited for that fish. As you guys know, we've been trying to catch a wahoo in our home water for a very long time on our own boat, I should say. And it finally happened, so I'm super stoked. Now, time to fillet this black fin tuna. So this was the biggest of the three, actually. And I know that I've filleted plenty of black fins on this channel before, but you know what? I'm gonna do it again. So, made the first head cut. Now I'm gonna go down. that make a cut at the tail following the bones down and we're gonna get to the backbone and the pin bones I'm gonna start to turn my night knife at a slight angle so we get on the other side of the backbone break through those pin bones now there's a couple different ways that you can fillet a tuna. You can go from this side to that side, or you can do it just from one side, or you could cut it down the center and separate it into two separate loins. But I'm just gonna stay on this top side and do it this way. And there we go. I did miss one little bit of meat right here but that's okay if you wanted to take a spoon and go down the bones and keep that stuff for like a spicy tuna roll or just like a poke bowl or something like that you could do that but there's the one side of the tuna now to skin this fish the first thing I'm going to do is cut out this little belly piece right here. It's also got some bones in there. Just that. Don't want to eat that. So you can see the bones as well as the bloodline from this way. So I'm going to cut on both sides of the bloodline. So now this centerpiece is all bone and bloodline and just stuff that nobody wants to eat. Scraps for crab bait. Okay, so now for the actual skinning, I've switched knives on you. This is now a nine inch narrow fillet knife and I'm going to line up my chunk of meat on the edge of the fillet table. Start with the tail section and just work my way down. I feel like I already went through the skin. Yes, I did. They have super, super thin skin, and sometimes they mess up a little bit, but you know what? You can just come back and fix your mistake. Nice and simple, just like that. Now, also, if you want, you can touch it up, and if you can see that dark red, that's a little bit more of the bloodline that we left on. You can just shave it off just like that. Bunch of red stuff that you don't want to eat. And you know what? We're going to try this one too. Just to see if we can get this one good. This is the belly side and I usually find that the belly side is easier to do than the top side. Ah, we still missed a little piece. That's okay. Sometimes you don't get it right every time. But just shave it off and there we go. Okay, so there was one side. I'm gonna put it in this bag. I'm gonna do the other side, but I'm not gonna bother showing you because it's the exact same thing. 
Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight I'm going to be cooking up two of the black fin tunas and I'm doing something I've never done before, which is tuna burgers. I wanted to do something different. I've done sushi a ton of times. I've seared it so many different ways. I've made poke bowls, tuna steaks, a bunch of different things. And I actually asked you guys, well, for those of you who are following me on Instagram for some new ideas. And one guy, I'll put his name here, gave me the idea of doing tuna burgers. So make sure you guys are following me on Instagram so you guys can see what I catch and things like that before I actually do it, before I post it on YouTube. But anyways, let's get to making these tuna burgers. The first thing I did was I took my loins of tuna and I chopped them up into just little chunks like this first. And now I'm going to put them into my food processor. Um, the first thing though I think I'm going to do is my garlic. So this is about a half a head of garlic that Victor so kindly sliced up for us. But I'm actually going to put this in first and chop this up um, better because I don't want to over mash my tuna and get it all smushed up. So I definitely want my garlic smaller so I'm going to put that in first. and minced. I'll be honest guys, one, I've never made tuna burgers before, and two, I haven't really used a food processor too much. So if you guys are sitting at home screaming at me for throwing my chunks in first, then I am sorry. Wow, that was quick. Okay, I'm putting the rest in. Okay, so I did half um, already, and now I'm putting in the other half. Now for the ingredients. We already got the garlic in there, and I'm gonna put everything in at one time because again, I don't wanna mush it up too much, so I just wanna mix it all together at once and be done with it and make my patties. So, I have two eggs here. This is to help us get stuff to stay together. I'm also going to do some Italian breadcrumbs. So when we make our patties, they stay together and not fall apart. We'll do that. Soy sauce. Because can you really have a tuna dish without soy sauce? Pepper. Nice, fresh ground pepper. I'm gonna make one comment about this ground pepper. A while ago, someone had suggested to me to get salt and pepper mills, finally did, and let me tell you, fresh ground pepper is so much better than just the regular ground pepper out of the container. Way better, so much more flavor, definitely highly recommend it. Salt, don't forget that the soy sauce has salt, so don't wanna to do too much of that. Sesame oil. I wanted to do fresh um, ginger. <laughs> I'm like staring at it in my hand like, what are you? I wanted to do fresh ginger, but thought I had some, didn't have some, don't want to run back to Publix. This is just ground ginger. So a little of that. Hmm. Yeah, take the lid off. And last but not least, Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Is that Worc right? Worcestershire. Worcestershire? Worcestershire. Was that right? I think so. I remember I used this one other time and totally butchered it, but that's okay. Worcestershire? Worcestershire. Worcestershire. <laughs> what is it? Worcestershire, I believe. Okay. And last but not least, we're adding scallion, fresh scallion into our mixture. And this is my little garden, which I've showed you guys before. I'm going to just snip some of the scallion out. And let me tell you, if you've never tried growing scallion before, it is the easiest thing ever to grow. It just, it just keeps regrowing. You can snip it down at the bottom and it just keeps regrowing. And if you go to the store and you buy scallion and you never really use the end piece of it, 
Just put it in a cup of water and you'll grow, grow scallion just like that. It's super easy. Like this is like so healthy. Isn't it, Mick? Mm -hmm. I have more scallion here, which look, this is how it starts. You plant the little end and then it just starts regrowing more. I even have scallions growing inside. We use scallion a ton in our recipes. And this is just in water. You see all the roots? You can grow them just like this in your house in water. And look how healthy they look. Don't they look great? Mm -hmm. So easy and simple to do, and it's actually really fun to watch them grow. But next time you buy scallion, just keep the little end piece, the root. Most of the time they don't even have any roots yet, and they'll just start growing roots. All you gotta do is put them in a little bit of water. Hydroponic farm. And make right sure there. you change, if you're gonna leave them in water, make sure you um, change out your water frequently. Okay. Back to these scallions that we cut from the backyard. I'm gonna take my scissors and just snip them like this. And last thing is to do our final mix. What it smells good, it's so fragrant. It does smell really good. Now, for the best part, depending on who you are, I'm taking my ring off to mush some patties together. The plan was to make six burgers. I think I'm gonna have more than um, enough meat for six. Maybe we'll make a couple more. <laughs> you look like you're having way too much fun over there. <laughs> I look like I've done this before. Brick the butcher. I've never made my own patties before. I've never seen anyone do it like that before. <laughs> I don't know what Well, it's doing. very sticky, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I read online that before you use, um, well actually even the directions that came with the food processor, when you make meat, when you process meat in the food processor, you're supposed to like have it very, very cold, like even in the freezer, which we did not do. That would probably really help it to um, stick together better probably, I'm guessing, I don't know. <laughs> So I made all the burgers and now they are in the fridge to keep them cold and I'm going to make something that you guys have seen me make a lot of times which is a spicy chili sauce, like a bang bang sauce. First thing is mayonnaise. This is gonna go onto our bun with our tuna burger. Next thing is sriracha. Um, if you like things really hot, do more sriracha and then sweet chili sauce. We've never used this one before, but it looks very good. Mix it up. Taste it. Not very hot. Add a little more sriracha and more of this as well. Kind of tasted like straight mayonnaise. I don't like this one as much. Mm. This sweet chili sauce? You don't like it as much? No. Me either. It's really watery. We ran out of sweet chili sauce and bought this one from the store today. And I'll be honest, it's not as good as what we normally use. So if you're going to the store to buy sweet chili sauce, I don't recommend this one. <laughs> it's kind of watery. You see how it, like normally it's thick, this one's really watery. I'm gonna put this in the fridge for now too. Right. Now I'm going to make something that I've been making since maybe my junior year of high school. Um, I went to some water polo party thing and they were making this on the grill and I was like, 
That is the best thing I've ever had in my entire life. I went home and I made it and I've been making it ever since then. I think I've made it before on the channel, but basically you just take your pineapple, cut it into long spears, and you're going to just take cinnamon and brown sugar and they're gonna put them right on the grill. It's basically like a dessert. So, so, so good. So first, cinnamon, and then we're gonna do brown sugar. And this brown sugar is basically gonna caramelize on these pieces of pineapple on the grill with the heat and be absolutely delicious. If you've never tried this before, highly, highly recommend it. I'm gonna flip them all over and just do it again on the other side. It smells so good already. And when you put it on the grill and it starts browning and caramelizing, oh my gosh, makes the neighbors wanna come running. <laughs> so now we are outside at the grill and we're gonna put on our burgers. that the burgers are on, I'm going to put on the pineapple. Here is our burger, completely made with our like our bang bang spicy mayo sauce on there, as well as some avocado slices. Here goes nothing. Mmm, I like it. I was worried about it being like dried out, and it's not. All right, guys, take a look at this tuna burger. When Brooke told me she was making tuna burgers, I was like, oh, that sounds so good. I want to do that for a kitchen cook. And let me be the first person to tell you, these are amazing. Like, no BS. And it's a really cool, creative, fun way to make tuna. Mmm, so good. Yeah, tuna burger, really good. And it's, it's not like the normal fish sandwich with just a filet. Like the turkey burger really stayed together well and it was fun to eat. Definitely recommend trying it. I also made some french fries which I almost burned down the house. I made them too crispy, but that's okay. Okay, so I let the pineapple stay on a little bit longer. Because honestly these are better the longer if you let them sit. Put 
Okay, Fisher and I were on a boat today and Brooke called us and invited us to dinner and said we were having um, tuna burgers. And I thought, yeah, sure, I'll come to dinner anytime. And I thought, tuna burgers, what's that gonna be like? And uh, then when I had them, I was like, wow, these things are really good. And they, they tasted like they were good for me too. So good job, Brooke, I liked it. Thank you. I think today's meal, it would be really good for moms that have like picky eaters because you can't taste the tuna. And then she had these really good like pineapple dessert things. And it's just really healthy and good for kids, so. Thanks, Gabby. <laughs>